Hey, it's Artifacts. I just heard about the news in Munich, which is really, really, really fucked up. I mean, this shit is getting really out of hand lately, guys. Um, I don't know what to say about it. I just want to say prayers to all the people who lost somebody in Munich today. Um, because <coughs> this shit is just fucked up. I mean, I instantly felt like I wanted to make something really nasty and really evil sounding just to get blow some steam off I guess and um I decided to make this thing um, I made it an operator it's a pretty cool base I'm gonna be showing you how I made it really quick and um, it sounds a little bit like this <laughs> So, it's this track, um, it's just a patch in Operator, there's nothing too crazy with this. Um, on here I have a LFO tool, which is just doing some side chaining, and it's being triggered by this clip right here, so that every time this kick drum plays, um, the bass basically gets stuck down a little bit. Um, let's just get to it this bass track it's pretty interesting um, but it's pretty simple as well so there's nothing really that complicated going on um, let's just uh, turn these off for now and let's focus on the main layer of this bass um, it's made with FM synthesis and um, I want to say that FM Synthesis is really really powerful and stuff like Operator or if you're an FL Studio guy stuff like Citrus is really really powerful to make absolutely amazing bass sounds. So I kind of like wanted to do one in Operator and see how well it turned out and I actually have to say I really really like the sound of this. So it's actually three operators so let me just show you the first one. Um, I'm gonna turn everything off right now. This is just the main thing, sort of like the first thing I started off with. Um, it's this particular waveform. Well, it's kind of like a sine wave, but it's just slightly different because I've added some harmonics. But I think it sounds pretty much like a sine wave. Maybe a little bit of upper harmonics in it, but... That's about what I've done. Um, there's a little bit of spread going on in this one as well, um, just to give it some stereo width. Um, I haven't done too much interesting stuff with this. I mean, the envelope is just straight on full blast, nothing crazy like or something like that. Um, I haven't even changed the release, so normally I would bring the release down as well, but I haven't even done that. Um, the whole power of this bass comes from this second operator. So if I turn that on, um, you can see I've basically drawn another shape, which again is pretty much like a sine wave, but just some upper harmonics in it. And I took this level of operator B and I mapped it to the first macro knob, so that I can now actually use the macro knob to change this particular one. Now, this automation that you're seeing right here is actually the automation on that macro knob. So the macro itself is going with a particular range. Let me do that for a moment so that you can see what it's going on. Um, so you can see that the range is only going from minus 25 dB to minus 12 dB. So it's not the entire range that you would normally get. And because I've done that, you get much more fine control over how the, well, the way how it sounds. So if I just um, move this macro knob for a little bit right now, just do that so that it disables the automation. If I play this right now, 
You might hear that when we go up into a higher note we get that reesy kind of movement. Well that's coming from this second operator because I've used a fine tune that I've brought up to 26 so it's actually slightly out of tune but because it's modulating the frequency of the first operator it kind of like creates that movement that you hear a lot in drum and bass. Now what I've done is I've automated that level. So remember I mapped it to the macro and then I've automated the macro so that we get a little bit more finer control but with that automation on it it now sounds like this so that already sounds much more interesting now I can show you the automation this is pretty much what's going on um, this actually um, it's actually spanned over two octaves, so we get, well, a lot of stuff. It's actually three octaves, by the way. So we're spreading this over three octaves, and that's why we get that really tearing, reesy kind of sound. So um, the next thing I did is I decided to add one more operator, which, again, is just a custom waveform that I've drawn. And this one is just slightly added to... Um, to the sound and I've used the fourth routing option in this one so both B and C are modulating the frequency of A so that gives us a slightly different sound from for instance the first one and um, what I'm doing with this one is I've set the fine tune to 13 so that's half the amount of the fine tune of the other one that I've used so it kinda like gives it another um, another form of movement but in a slightly different speed so that not every part sounds completely the same it just adds a little bit of variation makes the sound a little bit more complex so with that added we now get that so that sounds pretty cool then I added the LFO um, no wait let's do the filter first so I've added the filter and I set it to the OSR mode so we get some uh, filter drive right here so we can add some saturation and really bring the level up and I've also added the heart shaper which really gonna distort uh, well distort the crap out of the sound but that's pretty much where that heavy kind of sound comes from <laughs> You can hear it really makes it sound much more interesting. Um, the filter is being controlled though by an envelope. So I'm using this envelope right here and it's controlling the filter. But what I've done is I right down here I set this to sync and I set the repeat to 1. So what that's going to do is this envelope is repeated every bar. So every bar this envelope will basically repeat itself just like an LFO. And that kind of like makes the sound much more interesting because we have movement going on all the time and I just wanted to add even more movement so what I've done is I've taken the LFO and right down here I bypassed all the operators and I turned on the filter so now it, this LFO is actually controlling the filter as well and with that added we now get this <laughs> So it's just moving that notch filter around and it really adds a lot of character to the sound, especially because of that um, heart shaper that we've added. It really adds a lot of distortion and, well, that's pretty much what we want. Then I added a pitch envelope and what I've done with this is I've just made a really short, plucky kind of envelope shape and I set the peak to plus 36 semitones, so that's three octaves higher. So we kind of like get a, well, kind of like get a, um, a kick drum kind of sound at the start of each bass hit. Um, I've also turned the glide on and I set the amount of voices to one. So that's just going to make sure that we can do those glide bend notes um, that you can see right here. Um, definitely adds a lot of character to the sound. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the entire operator patch. Um, I layered that with a uh, sub, which is basically just a plain sine wave, but I've added that same pitch envelope to it, and there's nothing else going on. I can turn the filter off because I'm not using it anyway. And 
then I added a few effects to this and these effects are really really important let me show you what I've done um, you can see I'm automating these effects a little bit uh, the first effect I've added is a reverb now this one is really low in the mix and what I've done is I turn on low cut and high cut and I well change this graph so that we only get the high frequencies in the reverb signal and you can see the dry wet is set to 10% so that's really really low yeah well you can barely hear it and the decay time is up quite a lot to about well three and a half seconds um, and that is just there you know to give it a little bit of reverb and then I added a glue compressor to it which is compressing the shit out of this uh, out of this baseline and I'm then bringing up the makeup gain so it brings it up to the level it was before the compression and what this is gonna do is it basically going to fill out these gaps right here so if I zoom in a little bit you can see right here there's a gap here there's a gap there there's a gap you know and those gaps are being filled up with the reverb but without this compressor you're not even gonna hear that much reverb just listen you might hear a little bit of reverb but it's not that much and now when I add that compressor you suddenly get um, well a lot more reverb from that uh, particular layer and this is really powerful I mean this fills up these gaps and you kinda like get that sucking effect because this sound the main sound is much louder than the reverb signal so because we're compressing this so hard the reverb signal gets well well it basically gets ducked down because the main layer is taking up all the space and when that main layer just cuts out for one beat we suddenly have room and that's when the compressor will start to drop back down to its default value and that's when that reverb signal comes up so it kind of likes give that sucking effect but that's really powerful and I really really like that so I then decided that I wanted to do one more thing with that and if I let me see well yeah here in the end I kinda like wanted to make that change where we get even more reverb and it kinda like fades in into this silent part and I decided to add a cathedral reverb which is just from the uh, reverb library I can uh, show you it's right there and I forgot to turn my webcam back on but um you can see it's right there I just dragged that in and I automated the dry wet so I basically just automated that on this last part so that it really brings up that reverb and this one is also before the compressor so this one also gets affected by this heavy compression setting so without it we would get something like this <laughs> You can hear that delay as well. Um, I can turn it off. So that's what we get. And then I decided to add that reverb. It really sort of like sustains that last part. Um, kind of like fills it up a little bit. And it's powerful because the bass cuts out for a moment. So whenever it drops back in, um, this first bass hit is going to sound much more powerful because we're cutting the bass out completely um, so yeah that's really powerful and I, then I decided to do that little thing with the delay uh, which is just a delay on the return track and I kind of like chose the ping pong delay set it to 6 and I just well set the feedback to about halfway and I added the glue compressor just to bring the level of the delay up so because the delay sounded a little bit too quiet in my opinion and you know I just automated that send amount right here which is just this amount and I'm automating that upwards so that right on that last note we kinda like get a delay from that last note kinda like fills it up makes this part sound a little bit more interesting um, I don't know it sounds pretty cool
that is it for the entire base it's nothing too complicated actually so um I layered that with the kick drum as you can see and I made some stuff it's just some white noise and a riser or something that acts like a riser and that's about it that's everything there's to it it's not that complicated at all but it sounds pretty pretty damn awesome um, I guess I could work a little bit more on this I guess I could make it sound even better if I want but I guess this is good for now I mean I've made worse bass lines than this <laughs> um, yeah that's it for this video I hope you like it um, if you want to see more of these videos subscribe to my channel that would mean a lot I'm trying to get my channel up to well at least 50,000 subs um, and then we're gonna think about 100,000 but it's going the right way so um, thank you for watching I hope to see you back soon peace